What's going on everybody? I'm Dylan. I run Quest for Nostalgia where I teach how I do all my 3D printed movie props. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how I do the visors for all of my helmets. So you guys seem to really like the how to size the helmet. So I wanted to do more tutorials like that to do things that helped you with big projects overall. And visors are super common. You've seen a lot of my Power Ranger helmets and how I do the visors. I've done Mandalorians and different things like that. That's really popular for people. So let's get into how I do these tinted visors. This method isn't new by any means. I'm pretty sure Frank from Frankly Built does this and, and plenty of other creators as well. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. It's just what I do and figured I'd share this with you. Let's talk about materials first. There's two different things that I use often. I use face shields with the little foam backing here that you can get off of Amazon, or I use welding masks here. And usually I go with the untinted one. Um, sometimes you can find the blacked out ones, but sometimes there's a green tint and things like that. I just go with the clear one and I would tint it myself just like I would with this face mask. Let's talk about when I use different ones. I like the face shield here because it's very thin and very flexible. So it allows me to really get it nice and tight inside of those visor spaces here, but it's a lot smaller. It works for me for things like the Mandalorian. It works really well, but things like the Green Ranger where it goes so far backwards that it's really nice to have a lot longer of a face shield. You may only be able to use the welding mask instead of the face shield. So if that's what your helmet size is like. And then I use 5% window tint from Walmart that just sticks to it after you put some water between it. So let's go through the process of what it's like to make one of these visors. The first step is to make a paper template. All I do is grab a sheet of paper, I line it into the helmet, I cut it down to the general shape first so I can really get it in there nice and flush. If you have too much paper, it can crinkle and you can't get the actual shape. So cut it down, get it close, and then really get it into place there. If you start to see, you know, you still have wrinkles, Trim those pieces and trim it down to get a really nice fit. You can also from the opposite side trace it with a pencil and then give yourself a little bit of extra room outside of that marking to make sure that you have a nice fit. But I like to work from the inside out as opposed to doing that drawing method all the time. Once you have that template, then I transfer that over to the face shield. After we have that template and we have it cut out on our face shield, I usually peel off whatever protective layer is on the face shield and then I cut out an, a little bit excess of window tint, making sure I have a little bit extra around all the edges. Window tint will go so far. So you have, you'll have so, so much left over. You'll be able to do many, many projects with just one roll of window tint. The hardest part about the window tint is actually separating the sticky film from the window tint there. I take a razor blade and try to get it through there to peel off that backing. I roll it a little bit, then try to keep it apart. And then it's time to get started. What I do is I have a spare cup of water. I take that water and I drip it onto the visor, getting it a little bit wet, not super, super wet, but enough to where there's a little thin layer of water on the face shield. Then I peel the window tint and I start from one side and I slowly unpull the backing while I then press that window tint to the face shield. I have this small card scraper that I got with like a vinyl wrapping kit there. I'm pretty sure you can find them on Amazon. Very, very cheap. It just has a soft side and it's on a card. And that allows me to squeegee out those air bubbles as I go. I try to make sure I do it as clean as possible. So where I don't have a million bubbles in there, even off the start. But then if I do have any bit of bubbles, I try to push those out to the edges. Then next, I use a razor blade, uh, X-Acto blade, any kind of box cutter. Just make sure that the blade is very sharp. If you have a dull one, you can end up like pulling the tint with you. So try to get a good clean cut. So I go around and I trace around that visor and get a nice clean cut around what we have there. I then make sure I like wipe it down, get, every, get all the air bubbles off, make sure everything's nice and, and flush. There's no pockets of air or anything like that. And I don't want extra water sitting on there to leave watermarks or anything on the visor. This is what I definitely advise. Let it sit for an hour. Let it sit for an hour. I know it probably works perfectly fine. You can do it right away. And most people are like, oh yeah, you do it right away. Just give it an hour. If you really let that window tint bond to that surface there, I promise you when you go to stick it in the helmets, it's going to be so much better. There has been a few times where I've rushed it. I go through and I go to bend it to stick it into the helmet and that just allows it to create its own little air pocket in some little spot. Uh, especially when I did that Master Chief helmet, I did the gold visor. That one, you could not mess with it at all. You really had to wait for it to cure. And once it, once it actually did get sticky and dried out and all the water from between the layer was out of there, 
it didn't bubble up or anything as you bent it. You could bend it and it wouldn't do any wrinkles or pockets or anything like that. So just give it a break. Just give it an hour. Then I put the window tint side towards the opening because I don't want a hot glue onto the window tint. I want the window tint touching the plastic and then the plastic that you have on the other side, that's what I'm going to hot glue around. For things like the Power Ranger helmets, I press in the center area first. So I go into the very deepest part and then I tack down the nose and the lip here with hot glue in the deepest, deepest part. And then I'll work my way out of there around the helmet here. And that gets me a really nice flush visor here. So you sometimes you'll see like, oh, you can't really get in there and it feels like you can't get the visor flush to it without doing a vacuum formed or something like that. My tip, Definitely try to start with the center here. Press it hard into the center areas. And then if you can get these two hot glued down, then you'll have a so much better time gluing around the edge. And that's it. That's how you get a really good visor. And I love the darkness of these. It's actually better than the Lightning Collection one. So that Red Ranger over here and that Pink Ranger are both Lightning Collections. And those ones have a very lightly colored visor. I actually really prefer these dark visors and you can see out of them beautifully. I hope this clears up some of the mystery about what to do with visors, whether it be for Mandalorians or for Power Rangers or anything like that. I hope this really helps you out. Let me know in the comments below what helmets you're working on, uh, if this helps you out for that, if that gave you the information that you needed. And then on top of that, let me know if there's other tutorials that you're interested in, if there's things that I can help you with Cura settings or, or anything else, uh, masking off prints and what that's like. I'd love to do more tutorials like this for you to help you get rid of any bit of questions or mysteries, you know, something that pertains to all of 3D printing, not just a particular project. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You are the backbone of the channel. That really means the help. Watch time really helps me. Like, comment, subscribe, all of the YouTube things. Those things really help me grow and we're really booming and I really appreciate it because it's all to thanks to you guys. We are full steam ahead on this Iron Man suit over here. There's a lot of content. I'm about to do one about harnesses and the different fitment things for the suit. I hope you guys stick around and watch my build series of the Mark 46. But otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Peace.